Hi there everybody and welcome to lesson three in our series on using Google Sheets. Now in the previous lessons we've seen a little bit of how to do formulas and use functions and we've also seen how we can reference data from one cell into a calculation in another cell. I want to start out this lesson by showing you how we can do exactly the same thing between cells on different sheets. Let me show you what I mean. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a new sheet. Remember, we've got the one sheet here, which, are, which is our budget assumptions. But if we click on the plus button, which is the add sheet button, it will allow us to add another sheet. And I want to quickly rename this sheet to allocations. In other words, this is the sheet where I'm going to capture all of the time that the various resources are expected to work on the particular project. And I want to also just quickly change its color <clears throat> maybe to green so it stands out nicely. So in cell A1, I would like to bring across the same text that I have in assumptions cell A1. To do that, very, very easy. We simply start with a formula, so it's equals, and it must be equal whatever the value of this cell is. In other words, it's equal to sheet assumptions cell A1. And I could do the same thing in cell B1, or I could simply autofill, and you can see what the formula does. Because I've autofilled from one column to the next, what was column A now becomes column B. I'm going to quickly format those two as font size 10 and bold and maybe make this column wider so that it fits in project name. And I want to do exactly the same thing here in cell A5. Make that equal to whatever is inside this cell on the assumptions tab, the assumptions sheet. Press enter. And once again, all I need to do is autofill. And you'll see that everything that was on the assumptions sheet is now replicated to the allocation sheet. Let me just autofill this right down to the bottom. Material 7, materials 8, 9, and 10. And the last thing I need to do is just make these headings bold. Now, can you see here that previously I had entered in developer as one of my resources, and I don't need to enter in developer again because I've got this formula working for me that's going to take whatever data is inside the assumptions tab A8 and put it inside this cell over here. So I hope that's all making sense. Now, I'm not going to waste our time going through all the work that I need to do to set up the allocations sheet. I'm just going to swap sheets to one that I've pre-prepared. But I want to quickly just show you what I've done on the allocation sheet so that you understand. So this is the other sheet that I've pre-prepared. And there we go. I've set up the allocation sheet for us. So the first thing you'll notice is that I've auto-filled activity 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc all the way to activity 10 and I put in a total column and just to show you here some of the values in here I've just pre-entered so the developer is going to spend four days on activity one five days on activity two etc and I have used a special formula called sum to calculate the total sum of everything in those cells let me show you what that looks like by doing it inside this cell again. So what I did, it's a formula, so it's equal to, and it's one of the preset formulas that are inside sheets. This is the, this is the sum function here. So from that drop-down list, there are some of the preset formulas that there are shortcuts to. And the one I want is sum. Sum is another word for add. So I want to sum, and now it's asking me, what cells will I like to add the values for? And I'd like to add values for cells B6 all the way through, drag that all the way through here to K6, press enter, and it's going to create that formula. It's going to add all the values 
between B6 and K6. And in this case over here, all that I've done is I've autofilled that same formula down row by row, and you can see that every row, all that changes is the row number in the formula. Okay, now it's time to actually start calculating what the total project budget is. Let me show you what I mean by that. I've created another sheet here called project budget. And what this sheet is going to do is it's going to work with the assumptions here in terms of the base cost of all the resources and the total amount of work that has been allocated to each resource in order to come to a final costing for that project. Just notice here that once again I've used my equal to whatever's in assumptions A1, whatever's in assumptions B1, whatever's in assumptions A8, B8, and G8. So I don't need to re-enter any of this data. I'm taking all of this data from the assumptions tab that we set up right in the beginning. But now I need to add in the number of units allocated to each of the resources. Now remember, this number of units comes from the allocations tab. So in this case, it's equal to whatever has been allocated for the first resource, which is the developer. So that's this total over there. Enter. 42. Now I could do the same thing again and again in each row, or I could more easily just autofill that. And see, it's going to take all of the values that are in these cells and put them in these cells over here. So let's do that all the way down. Quickly remove the ones we don't need over there and over there. And now we're ready to start calculating total costs. Well, the total cost of this resource is equal to the cost per unit, which is days, multiplied by the n total number of units that this resource is allocated in the project. So it's C5 multiplied by D5. Press Enter. That is the total value of this resource inside this project. Once again, autofill that formula down. Delete the ones we don't need. Oops, let's undo that. And now we're in a position to work out the total cost of each kind of resource. So the total for personnel, the total for service, and the total for materials. And we're going to use our preset sum formula again. So this is where I would like the total to appear. And this total is equal to, go back to my shorthand functions, sum of all of these cells over there. Enter. Do exactly the same thing here. Equal to the sum of all of those cells. And lastly, this is equal to the sum of all of those cells. Now it's time for us to start calculating the total cost of this project. Now that total cost is going to be inside this cell over here. That's our subtotal. And I would like that total to be the total of all the personnel plus the services plus the material. And I'm going to use the sum formula again. So it's equal to, or the sum function rather, equal to sum. But in this case, I'm not going to select a range of cells like that. I'm going to select the discrete ones. Select the first one, then press and hold down the control key to select the next one, then press, and down, press down and hold the control key to select the next one, and press enter. And you can see that what this cell is calculating is the sum of whatever values in F4, whatever values in F16, and whatever value is in F28. 
Now, so far in this series of lessons, I've shown you how you can take data from one cell and replicate it into another cell. And we've done that between cells within the same sheet and between cells on different sheets. But now I want to show you one last technique of taking a value throughout your spreadsheet or your workbook so that you can use that value repeatedly. And in this case, it's called the named range. Now, the one benefit of named ranges is that it means that you can refer to the named range by a name that makes sense to you, rather than having to remember where that cell is inside your workbook. Let me show you exactly what I mean. We're going to be working with the named range for the overheads for this entire project. First thing, I'm going to go to my assumptions sheet, and I'm going to just insert a row above this one where I can enter in the overheads rate. So the label is overheads and the rate is 10%. I don't want that to be bold and I want it to be right aligned and I want to format this as a percentage. Okay, so it's 10%. Now I want to create the named range that will allow me to take this value and use it in calculations throughout the rest of the workbook. So I'm going to select the 10% and then from the data menu, go to the named ranges option and add a range. This named range I'm just going to call overheads and it's going to take its value from assumptions B6, which is correct, click on done. I can close this and go to the project budget and let me show you the first thing that we can do with this. Inside this cell over here, I want to just state what the overhead rate is. All that I need to do is then go equal to and type in overheads. And because it's a named range and it recognizes that, it changes from black to orange when it's correctly recognize that range. Press enter and there we have 10%. I can then calculate the overheads of the subtotal by doing the following. The overheads is equal to 10% of this total. So it's click on that and multiply that total. I could click on the cell here and it will take through the 10%, but just to show you how the named range works, I can also just multiply that by overheads as well. Press enter and we get the same answer. Now what this means is that if I change the overheads to 15%, for example, this has changed and that has also changed in sympathy. This is simply referring to whatever is inside this cell and I've labeled the contents of that cell overheads and this is using whatever is inside the cell that I've labeled overheads. Now just before we finish this lesson let me take you through the other calculations that I did on that last sheet just to make sure that you're all on the same page. So we've been through the overheads calculation this new subtotal is simply that plus that so it's the subtotal plus the overheads calculation. The VAT is a calculation of the new subtotal but multiplied by 14% and I could have made VAT another named range inside my workbook. Total is then the new subtotal plus the VAT amount to give me the total project value. Well I hope you enjoyed this lesson in the next lesson, I would like to just take you through a nested if statement. Now, if you don't know what a nested if statement is, make sure that you catch lesson number four in this series of lessons on using Google Sheets. Until then, bye-bye.